Happy Earth Day. Today, I'm reminded of the work we must do to protect our future generations. And today, for the first time, Americans can apply to join my American Climate Corps so everyone has a pathway to a clean energy career. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so everyone has a pathway to a clean energy career. And other delusions of lunch bucket Joe Biden. How about a career in cannibalism? Cannibalism seems to be rising. Ah, yes. Well, happy Earth Day, everyone. Yay, it's Earth Day. Joe Biden wants to wish you all a happy Earth Day. And you're going to have a career in uh, renewables or something and help communist China. Something like that. Madness like never before in the United States of America. Because of, you know, Democrats. That's the, uh, that's the thing about them. I, uh, I do want to uh, share with you just a thing or two about Earth Day because uh, self-immolation being such a trend among Democrats, it was Wynne Allen Bruce who really got things going two years ago today, April 22nd of 2022, here in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, in front of the beautiful Supreme Court building, when Alan Bruce set himself on fire, and uh, he died a day later. So he was protesting what he called the climate crisis. The Democrats call it a climate crisis. And uh, he self-immolated as a result of what the Democrats had told him. It was remarkable. It was. He was 50 years old, five zero years old, when he self-immolated two years ago today. And, and with that, I just want to share with you a little bit of background on, on Earth Day. Because Earth Day is, uh, you know, one of them of these, uh, I'm in favor of the Earth. I like the Earth. I think the Earth is good. I like my Earth. My planet is my favorite planet of all of the planets. This is my favorite, in spite of the left roaming free and radical Islamic jihadis. But I repeat myself because the Democrat Party really got in bed. Now, let me go to this story about one of the founders of Earth Day, because Earth Day was founded by people, as you might imagine. The Daily Caller did a story, Earth Day co-founder killed, comma, composted his girlfriend. Well, at least he composted her, you know, you got because it shows that he's environmentally, that's one fewer person breathing, and uh, that's good for the environment. And then he composted her uh, in his apartment. But but never mind that. Pretty amazing stuff. It was uh, Michael Bastach at uh, the Daily Caller wrote the story 2017 on the, uh, the foundry. He begins cleverly, I think. Here's an inconvenient truth about the self-described founder of Earth Day. He murdered and composted his girlfriend. But he's an environmentalist, so isn't that okay? You know who else was an environmentalist? The Unabomber. The Unabomber was an environmental extremist, too. Well, maybe not an extremist, maybe perfectly mainstream environmentalist. Environmental activist and self-proclaimed Earth Day co-founder, Ira Einhorn, had a dark side. NBC Fake News reported in 2011 that Einhorn was found guilty of murdering his ex-girlfriend and stuffing her composted body inside of a trunk after five years of being together Helen Maddox broke up with Einhorn and raged he was enraged he threatened to throw Maddox's belongings into the street if she didn't come by and get them she went to Einhorn's apartment to retrieve them on September 9th of 1977 but was never seen again Several weeks later, Einhorn, founder of Earth Day, told police that she went missing after going out, this is one of my favorite parts of the story, after going out to the neighborhood co-op to buy tofu and sprouts. Does it get any better than that? I mean, that's the kind of detail that makes a news story worth reading, isn't it? Not to the grocery store, but to the co-op. See, that's key, uh, use of uh, the term co-op. She went to the co-op. What did she go to the co-op for? Oh, to get tofu and sprouts and sprouts because she was saving the environment, but it didn't work out very well because, you know, just uh, pretty wacky, uh, wacky stuff. This is what happened. Don't, don't date environmentalists. This is the lesson here 
I think, for young women across the country. Now, the thing is, it went out and found and, and, and uh, to buy tofu and sprouts. However, 18 months later, listen to this now. She allegedly went out to buy tofu and sprouts at the co-op. 18 months later, authorities searched his apartment after neighbors complained that a, quote, reddish-brown, foul-smelling liquid was leaking from the ceiling directly below Einhorn's bedroom closet, NBC News said at the time. In the closet, police found Ms. Maddox, quote, beaten and partially mummified, her beaten and partially mummified body stuffed into a trunk that also had been packed with styrofoam, which is bad for the environment. Why is he using styrofoam as a packing? We know we're not supposed to use styrofoam. Air fresheners. I assume that they're the Christmas tree uh, kind of air fresheners because uh, air fresheners, you know, not a can, but air fresheners. And newspapers. Well, it seems appropriate that newspapers should be in there. Hopefully the Washington Post and the New York Times. What else would it be? In the closet, police found Maddox and, and just, I mean, just completely crazy stuff. Einhorn jumped bail and spent 23 years evading authorities and hiding out all over Europe. Finally, he was caught and extradited to the U.S. from France. Naturally, where else would he go? Where he was put on trial and convicted of murder. Mm-mm-mm. Currently serving a life sentence as the founder of, uh, of Earth Day. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, uh, well, I'll get into that later. You know, because there's a lot of these uh, founders of uh, crazy things that uh, they're, uh, you know, never mind. I'll get to that one later. So NBC News reported that taking the stand in his own defense, Einhorn claimed that his girlfriend had been killed by CIA agents who framed him for the crime because he knew too much about the agency's paranormal military research. Sure. Earth Day was created in the spring of 1970 to raise awareness, take action on the pressing environmental issues of the time. And what were the pressing environmental issues of the time? Oh, the coming ice age, the uh, the impending ice age. Armadillos were fleeing south from the Dakotas because they knew that the glaciers were coming back and a new ice age was coming. And that's what Time magazine had us terrified of in 1970. Just amazing. So that's your founder of Earth Day. Good, uh, good stuff. Warm periods like ours last only 10,000 years, but ours has already lasted 12,000. So if the rhythm is right, we are over ready for a return of the ice. Experts like Reed Bryson, the head of the biggest meteorological department in the world in Wisconsin, believe that since 1945, that has been in progress. We're returning to an ice age. That was Howard K. Smith reporting on the uh, looming ice age and so we had to create Earth Day because, you know, because it was tough. It's tough out there. Um, all right. I, um, I have a great many things to get to. I just say let's uh, go to the telephones because I said I was going to go to the telephone. So let's go to, I'm not a Democrat. Let's go to Dave calling from Frederick, Maryland. Beautiful Frederick, Maryland. Dave, you're on the Chris Plant Show. How are you doing, Chris? Very well, Dave. What do you say? Well, I'm no longer health care, Dave, because I now have Medicare. So that's how you remembered me when I called in before. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. Anyway, we were, my wife and I were at dinner with her family yesterday. And her sister-in-law is sitting to my left. And someone mentioned Trump's name. <laughs> oh, my God. Golly, I, I didn't know her political bent before that, but I kind of figured, man, she went into this diatribe about he needs to be in jail. Everything they've charged him with is he's guilty of. She hates him. She wants to see him rot in prison. I mean, I've never seen anyone with so much hatred. How do you get up in the morning and hate so much? It takes too much energy. These people are insane. Well, you know, there's a lot of this going on out there, Dave. The Democrat Party has uh, successfully manipulated the uh, already teetering emotions of so many Democrats out there to the point where they have become very unwell, very unwell indeed. They hate the Jews and they hate Trump. They want to jail and or kill 
the political enemies of the Democrat Party. In fact, this Hillary Clinton audio is completely berserk. Uh, she's she's quite mad. But uh, but that's not all day because there is a Democrat member of Congress that wants to strip President Trump of his Secret Service protection. Now we got a Trump hater that self-immolated outside the courthouse in New York on Friday, and he died on Saturday of his self-inflicted injuries. Uh, completely crazy. And the guy is a Bernie Sanders fanatic, uh, a hardcore Democrat. The media tried to blame Trump for that because of their their uh, mental illnesses. And then we've got a uh, Democrat member of Congress who is all for taking President Trump's Secret Service protection away because, and I've talked about this, Dave, if they were successful in lynching their political enemy, Donald Trump, and sending him to prison, then uh, he, he would have to have Secret to Service protection because he's entitled to Secret Service protection for life. But a uh, Democrat yep. member of the House of Representatives wants to strip him of his Secret Service protection to put him in more danger because the violent, suicidal, homicidal, crazy left is on the loose out there. And uh, honestly, House Democrat introduces bill aimed at Trump that would strip Secret Service protection, quote, from felons, right? Um, this, is a, this is a sick, demented, dangerous bunch of criminals like the criminal Benny Thompson. Benny Thompson, the yeah, Democrat from— the one on the January 6th committee. Uh, sure, absolutely. And, yeah, he's part of the lynch mob. The Democrat Party is, is completely insane, completely berserk. But Benny Thompson, the Mississippi Democrat, Democrat on Friday— introduced legislation that would strip Secret Service protection from convicted felons sentenced to prison so that you'd be murdered in prison. You know, the uh, officer uh, Derek Chauvin in Minneapolis was sentenced to prison because the career criminal, uh, habitual felon, drug addict, fentanyl, and methamphetamine creep George Floyd died of cardiac failure while resisting arrest. And uh, the police officer was naturally sent to prison because the Democrat Party is a lynch mob of pro-crime, anti-police, pro-Hamas, anti-Israel, death cultists who are calling for the extermination of the state of Israel and the death of all the Jews. And so Benny Thompson oh, and, and, and Derek Chauvin was sent to prison where a Democrat stabbed him 22 times, and, and obviously in an effort to murder him because Democrats create this psychopathic rage everywhere they go. And now Benny Thompson, and, and it's, uh, you know, he thinks he's clever, I guess, uh, will con uh, strip Secret Service protection from all convicted felons. There is only one that's, uh, you know, uh, possibly facing that, and it's someone that they would murder because they're psychopaths. That's your, your Democrat Party. It's a big problem. But, uh, but Dave, back to your family member, back to your... Uh, uh, your uh, sister-in-law, is that who it is? And yes. and the yes. name came up yesterday at dinner with the family. And how did this resolve itself? Well, uh, because my mother-in-law had died back in January, so this dinner was kind of in her honor. Uh -huh. um, and everyone knows where I stand uh -huh. uh, politically. Uh-huh. And um, my other sister-in-law looked at me and said, oh, no, here he goes. But I just <clears throat> restrained myself. And, uh -huh. just, and she said, my sister-in-law said, well, that's just my opinion. And I said, well, you at least still have that ability in this country for now <laughs> to speak what you want. Uh -huh. And I left it at that. And, and she's she thinking, she well, if and, Trump wins, I won't be able to express my opinion anymore because that's how insane yeah. they've all become. And the Democrat Party did know, this to I, them. I want to ask her, were you better off? Four years ago than you are now. Yeah. I mean, do you, is, is the world better off then than it is now? I mean, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't know where that level of hatred comes from. It is um, remarkable to see. We've never seen anything like it. And then I'm going to share with you shortly the hatred of the Jews and of Israel. That's coming up too. They are a they are a crazy suicidal, homicidal death cult, a hate cult, a racist death cult, uh, a genocidal gang of lunatics. And Dave, I got to say, I, I believe you did the right thing by just letting her be an idiot and you be the adult. And this has been happening like this forever. 
and it's becoming more and more difficult for normal people like yourself to resist uh, speaking up more freely and making it clear. Um, but I, I think you did the right, especially since it's the death of mother-in-law and all that, uh, you did the right thing by not turning it into a crazy fest. Just let her be the crazy fester and uh, leave it at that, I, I believe. Dave, you know, God bless you. You did the right thing. Thank you, and thanks for the call. Going on all over the country. And where do you hear the stuff coming up? Good Lord. Looking for the ultimate in comfort and pain relief? Well, let's compare G Defy shoes to other shoe brands that, that promise comfort and support and pain relief. I'm wearing my G Defy shoes right now. I literally am. I just remembered. Uh, typical shoe brands rely on, on EVA soles for cushioning, but G Defy shoes, well, they go above and beyond with Versa Shock technology, providing superior shock absorption and energy return. Uh, if you suffer from foot pain, knee pain, back pain, G-Defy's advanced technology may help provide you with the relief that you deserve. G-Defy shoes also offer two free supportive orthotics, you know, inserts to help improve your, your body's biomechanics, resulting in better body alignment and ultimate comfort. Say goodbye to discomfort. G-Defy is more than EVA souls, come on. It's your path to unparalleled comfort and pain relief. Visit gdefy.com today. Experience the ultimate in comfort and pain relief at gdefy.com. That's G-D-E-F-Y, G-D-E-F-Y.com. Use the promo code CHRIS30, CHRIS30, and you're going to get $30 off your order of $150 or more. Yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of crazy out there. I mean, honestly... Hey, uh, Democrats, what is wrong with you? What happened to your party? Why are you like this? Are you familiar with the rise of Nazism in Europe in the 20th century? Because you need to smell yourselves. You've gone quite mad. Donald Trump is not the problem. Michael was just hypothesizing that maybe we should marry up the Democrat self-immolators with barbecue and the cannibals in Haiti, and that'd be a step saver, wouldn't it? They could go down there and cook themselves. By the way, um, Earth Day, again, today is Earth Day. The Earth Day founder murdered his girlfriend and stuffed her into a trunk in his closet and then fled to Europe for decades, but... Earth Day is also on, on Vladimir Lenin's birthday, the murderous, barbarous, socialist hero, founder of the Bolshevik Revolution. Lenin's birthday is today, and so is Earth Day, and that is not a coincidence. Yeah, Democrat member of the House of Representatives, communists, uh, Benny Thompson, racists, Democrat Mississippi. Again, on Friday, he uh, introduced legislation to strip Secret Service protection from convicted felons. That would apply only to one person, which shows how corrupt he is, how filthy he is. And um, here, uh, uh, Michael and I were talking about this this morning. There is only one way to read this. Congressman Benny Thompson's dream is that Donald Trump will be murdered by Democrats in prison just like Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was stabbed 22 times in prison by a Democrat trying to murder him, stabbed 22 times, police officer. The Democrat Party is not liberal. The Democrat Party is left. But the uh, extraordinary uh, Congressman Thompson, not a serious man, not a good man, a corrupt man, a racist man, an anti-American man, a radical and extremist. So unfortunately, current law doesn't anticipate how Secret Service protection would impact the felony prison sentences of a protectee, even a former president, Thompson said. And uh, boy, he was the chair of the January 6th committee, the select committee on January 6th, said it's regrettable that it's come to this. But you're a little Hitler, so you'll go with it anyway. But this previously unthought-of scenario could become our reality. Yeah, you're right. And all former presidents of the United States are entitled to Secret Service protection for the rest of their lives. 
But he wants murder because he's got murder on his mind. He has political murder, political assassination on his mind because he's not a liberal. He's a leftist. And the Democrat Party, once again, edging toward galloping toward civil war in the United States of America because they're very much not on our side. And they're anti-Semites, too, because that just rounds out the resume, doesn't it? Womp, womp, womp. Um, and uh, and I also I love the Earth Day is uh, Lenin's birthday, Vladimir Lenin's birthday. Isn't that perfect? What a coincidence. You know, in Europe, they call the environmental radical lefties, they call them watermelons. They call, they call them watermelons because they're green on the outside, but they're red on the inside. And in reality, they're commies who are here to grow government power, take away private citizens, and they don't look at people as citizens, even in the United States, uh, to take power away from the citizens and the taxpayers and put that power in the hands of the state. That's uh, what the environmental movement is really about. Again, they started Earth Day in 1970 when we were all terrified of the coming Ice Age. I wasn't, uh, but the armadillos were according to Time Magazine and Newsweek Magazine. These are leftists. These aren't liberals. Just amazing. The fact sheet that Benny Thompson, congressman, put out on the so-called disgraced former Protectees Act notes that Trump's unprecedented 91 felony charges ginned up by radical Democrats abusing their power to lynch their political enemies just as the Democrat Party has a long history of doing. Uh, They are the party of lynchings, of ropes and trees and things. Federal, state, and courts across the country have created a new exit sheet. Listen, the, uh, the Congress must address to ensure Secret Service protection does not interfere with the criminal judicial process and the administration of justice. Sure, the exigencies are what he's concerned about. That's pretty amazing stuff from a a member of Congress. This measure would apply to former President Trump if he's convicted of a felony. And if he's sent to prison, they would strip him of his Secret Service protection to guarantee his murder. Because that's what Benny Thompson is angling for here. Murder. He's a Democrat, a left-winger, anti-American, racist, Uh, And uh, Trump derangement syndrome is his bag, baby. Boy, is it his bag. Just crazy. Now, with the uh, Democrat Party being the, you know, the rising socialist workers party of the 1930s in Germany, and they're doing a darn good job of replicating this. They're uh, and they're in some way. I mean, it's it's a, a a different situation. I was talking to Michael about this this morning. Also, you know, they've morphed. The left has morphed like the chameleons that they are, the snakes that they are shedding their skin. Um, But we're still fighting the Cold War. The Cold War is not over. We didn't win the Cold War. Well, we did on the world stage, but the left here on college campuses, lefties uh, in government in the permanent bureaucracy and on college campuses, they kept the Bolshevik revolution alive. And uh, Benny Thompson is one of those stooges. Now, let's go to what's going on today in the United States of America because Columbia University, an Ivy League school in New York City, the, uh, the students have been told by the president to stay home. And if they're going to do class, do it by Zoom call or whatever, do virtual uh, 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 teaching through Zoom calls because it's too dangerous there for Jews because people that call themselves liberals but have been indoctrinated by the left believe that Jews are white people and Palestinians are brown people and all white people are oppressors and all brown people are oppressed. They're oppressed by the fact that they can't generate their own electricity thousands of years later too, but but never mind that, or produce their own clean water, which the Palestinians can't do. So the Jews give them clean water and electricity. 
and the supplies for their hospitals. And the Democrats give them all the weapons they need to commit genocide against the Jews, which is their stated goal. Columbia University rabbi urges Jewish students to stay home for their own safety as school braces for more anti-Israel protests. And they were there at Columbia University, and they're there at Yale University today, both Ivy League schools, the Poison Ivy League. One professor is demanding a police escort when he shows up for work in the morning because he's Jewish, and he thinks that the Jew haters will get him. They call themselves Democrats and liberals. Columbia University is is preparing for more anti-Israel protests on the eve of Passover, which begins today, with one Jewish professor asking to march through the campus, right, to the protest with a police escort, and one rabbi warning his fellow Jews to stay off campus until the protests have died down. Now, let's go to uh, let's go to soundbite number one. Columbia University. Uh, over the weekend, it was a, a hotbed of madness. And on Saturday, the campus of Columbia University uh, had mobs of violent people that called themselves Democrats, and they called themselves liberals. That's ironic. I've been talking for years about how these people have no sense of irony. But uh, they are the rising tide of fascism and of genocidal anti-Semitism in the United States of America, and conservatives are standing in the breach in their way. And I got to tell you, if there aren't new conservatives being minted every second in America, then there's something even more terribly wrong with our culture. But here it is. They are pro-Hamas, and they're chanting in favor of the Al-Qassam Brigade, which is a genocidal anti-Semitic death cult that has the full support of candy-ass $90,000 a year students at the Ivy League Columbia University. This is what it sounded like on Saturday. They're always rhyming and chanting and singing. It's another sign of mental illness. And they're uh, chanting, they're so excited about the al Qassam brigades that they, uh, they can't stop. They really love it. Just um, radical Islamic terrorism. And um, the Democrat Party has raised thousands and thousands, if not millions, of young people to be pro-Hamas, pro-Iran, anti-Semites, genocidal anti-Semites, when Columbia University sounds like this. Never forget the 7th of October. That will happen. Never forget the 7th of October. One more time. Not five more times. Not ten more times. Not a hundred more times. Not a thousand more times. Not ten thousand times. Pause that for me for a sec because that's one where they're the screaming and they're white suburban American youths, college age, and they're screaming at Jews on campus October 7th, where members of Hamas dismembered women, kidnapped and raped to death women, uh, 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 used knives to butcher men, women, and children, put a baby in a microwave oven. They, uh, it's a gruesome, horrible, the uh, greatest massacre of Jews since the end of World War II when we went in there and stopped the Socialist Workers Party from committing their deeds. But these guys are screaming in the face of Jewish students, October 7th will happen again, not 10 times, not 100 times, 10,000 times they're screaming, where 1,200 Jews were killed. So Let's see, a thousand times, that'd be 1.2 million, that would be... Never forget the 7th of October! Not one more time! Not five more times! Not ten more times! Not a hundred more times! Not a thousand more times! Not ten thousand times! Ten thousand times! Ten thousand times a thousand and two hundred. And this is what they've been raised to think. I'm making quotation marks with my fingers. This is not thought. This is not thinking. This is savagery. 
and they call themselves liberals, and they are Democrats, and Joe Biden desperately needs their votes. And these are people that are dangerous to Western civilization. And honestly, the Ivy League universities are a danger to Western civilization because the hard left took them over a long time ago, and they smirk smugly. And and uh, now there is at least one Republican member of Congress looking to have the president of Colombia removed from her job, too. She's an Egyptian woman, and the genocidal... Jew hatred on campus is uh, quite extraordinary. A Jewish Columbia student by the name of, of Chaya was asked about, you know, what it was like on Friday on campus. It was scary. It was really like a, the fact that someone would really say that. I think that we've come to terms with the fact that it really is something that people feel. And I know that it is. But the fact that someone outwardly said it to us was really scary. It just feels... I don't know. It feels very reminiscent of a different time that we should never go back to. It does feel very reminiscent of a different time that we should never go back to. Never go back to. A little uh, valley tuck. They're just amazing. Uh, This morning on the Fox News Channel, a, uh, a student at Columbia University, where again, the mob has rallied on campus again. Riot police are out at Columbia and at Yale because the it's the it's the privileged revolution. I sure hope they don't all self-immolate today because we don't have enough fire extinguishers. Uh, Jewish student at Columbia University, Andrew Parker Stein, this morning on uh, what they've been experiencing. A bunch of Jewish students came to campus to respond to the encampment. We just sang songs of peace. Um, On the way out, a pro-Hamas mob started chasing us, calling us in the middle of campus, calling us inbred, that we have no culture. One of them grabbed my friend's Israeli flag in the middle of campus, carried it to a mob by the gate that were communicating with the angry mobs outside of campus. They threw hard objects at him. They started harassing him. They tried to light his flag on fire, and nothing is done with this. And after that, on the way out, we were talking to public safety. They started following us on the way out, and public safety just shrugged their shoulder. They're They're the ones who are responsible in protecting us. And the only protection that we had was we have one student who's a 6'5 student, and everyone hid behind him as we were leaving campus. And an angry mob of pro-Hamas students chased us off of campus, screaming, we don't want no Zionists here, get out of here, F Israel. Uh, I am a Zionist. Uh, I believe that Israel has a right to exist. Now, this is a young man. He's uh, going to school. He's trying to go to school. You're inbred, no culture, took the Israeli flag. Uh, where was it that the guy had his eye poked out with the uh, tacked with a, a flag at Yale? At Yale University, Jewish student attacked, uh, eye gouged out with, uh, with a flagpole that was stolen from the uh, person whose uh, eye uh, stabbed out. Uh, Andrew Parker Stein, student at Columbia. People have been saying for a while now that they don't feel safe, and a lot of that had to do with the rhetoric. But but I want to be clear right now, this has now gotten into physical safety. I no longer feel physical physically safe on my campus. What year are you in? Uh, he's in his junior year. Um, and it doesn't end there, and it's going on again today. And this is the Democratic Party. This is Joe Biden's party. This is Nancy Pelosi, but this is Ilhan Omar's Party. Ilhan Omar's daughter, who's a genocidal racist uh, and uh, Jew hater, she was suspended from school the other day. Now she's complaining on, on X that she's homeless and starving already. We should send you back to Somalia. You, know, you should go to the House of Representatives where your mom works and go to the cafeteria there. Get a bowl of beetles. Maybe a bowl of beetles would be perfect for you. You know, baseball season is underway, and that puts us right in the middle of tech season. You know, you've heard all the horror stories, and these never end well. This is an urgent message for you. If you have unfiled back taxes or if you owe the IRS $10,000 or more, it's time to call the legal experts at Legal Tax Defense. At Legal Tax Defense, they have teams of tax attorneys and legal professionals that will help guide you through the complicated tax codes and your legal troubles. They're here to help you. The IRS recently announced that increased collection activity would be underway uh, for the 2023 tax season. You know, and uh, look, it's uh, we're already past the due date, so... They've got former IRS uh, tax attorneys and expert tax professionals. Legal Tax Defense is gearing up for this activity to help you and to protect you. 
Call them today. Don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate. Call 800-472-0467. Take advantage of legal tax relief programs. You know, and the Fresh Start program. Call Legal Tax Defense today. One of the nation's leading tax defense firms. For more than 10 years, Legal Tax Defense has helped save taxpayers just like you millions and millions in back taxes owed to the IRS. IRS, so call now and get qualified for your tax relief options. Call the experts at Legal Tax Defense right now. The call is confidential and it's free. Call 800-472-0467 online at LegalTaxDefense.com. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the Democrats are coming for everyone now, aren't they? The children, the Jews. They need to start wearing armbands. Democrats need to start wearing armbands. Seems only fair and historically appropriate. We're at 888-630-9625. Here's one of the headlines coming up. Jewish Yale student journalist stabbed in the eye with Palestinian flag during protests. A young woman, a student journalist at uh, the Yale University named Shahar Tartak was stabbed in the eye by a uh, pro-Palestinian protester with a flagpole, uh, ended up in the hospital. She was on the television this morning. I want to share her story with you uh, coming up and other Jewish students on Ivy League campuses who are so terrified that they refused to go back on campus because Kristallnacht again to Nacht. Wow. You know, Democrats, you're welcome to call in and explain yourselves. Please, uh, English, though, no German. (laughs) 